number 28, Me Learning to Play the Melodeon. Uh, in this blog I'm dealing with the tune Donkey Riding, which is a, a fairly standard uh, tune for the DG Melodeon, and uh, I've returned to my two row Dino Buffetti Melodeon for this one, come away from my three rows that I've been using quite a lot lately. And uh, just to explain my music a little bit to you, if you've got the sheet of it in front of you, uh, if you have an arrow uh, pointing to the right, that means you're pushing the bellows in. If the arrow points to the left, then you're pulling the bellows out. And I've only put those signs in where there is an actual change in the direction of the bellows. Uh, where I play the D bass and D chord that are the top two outside uh, on the push, I put an asterisk by it. Other than that, it's the D bass D chord at the bottom two outside row that you are pulling, of course. Very often I play the A on the D row, and where I do that, I've written that note with a diamond shaped head, not the normal kind of egg shaped head. So if you have an A that has a normal head, um, it's on the G row on the pull. Above the notes, you've got the names of the notes, and above that, so now you have the bellows directions, and then above that, you've got the names of the, the chord that you're playing, or the bass note, uh, depending whether you're on an um or a pa. And you've got the right hand fingering in small numbers, either above or below the notes, you can, you can see that. Um, so let's get started with the A part. Now this will be very much a Marmite version of the tune because uh, some people won't like the way I do it. They'll prefer to uh, do far more inning and outing on the G-Row. But as you may know, if you've been following my blogs, uh, I like to play cross row quite a lot. Uh, for me, it's more comfortable. I'm not saying it's the best way or the right way, it's just the way that suits me, and you never know, you might find it's pretty good too. So this A part. So there's your first stave. So you're starting by pushing. So obviously you're using the A on the D row when you get there. And you pull. And notice the A this time is on the G row. And then you push at the end there to get the B. So the notes are G, A, B, B, C, A, B. And you've got the dotted quaver semiquaver, followed by two quavers. And the bass. Fairly standard. Pushing the G, pulling the D, pushing the G. Fingering's pretty important. Finger one, finger three, finger two. Okay. Now on the second stave, I do everything on the push. So all the A's are on the D row, uh, and it's all a D bass note, D chord, the asterisk marked one, so that's the top two on the outside row. And the timing a one and two and a one and two. Notice it's two four the time signature. So you've got uh, two quavers, uh, a quaver and two semi quavers, two quavers and a crotchet. Okay, B A A G A B A A. So it's all pushing, all with the D bass and the D and the D chord. Now the third stave. Uh, is the same as the first stave. And the fourth stave, uh, again you've got the pushing D, so it's the top two, outside row. B, A, D, D, G, G. And it's uh, quaver, 
quaver, quaver, quaver, crotchet, crotchet, one and two and one, two, okay? So what I'm doing here is... So the finger's there. Two, three, 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 one, one. The A is on the D row, so of course it's on the push. Okay? Now you've got the repeat sign, so you do all that again. Um, you'll find, uh, with the way I'm doing it, you need to use the air button quite a lot because there's a lot of notes on the push not so many on the pull. So every chance you get, uh, give the air button a jab so that you've got plenty of air in the bellows for all those push notes. And this is quite a small uh, melodeon. The bellows capacity is not great on this, so you'll see me starting with the bellows pretty wide, wider than you'd need to if you had a, a bigger box. So that's the A part. Uh, let's deal with the B part, or if you like, the chorus. Now the chorus starts on the pull, uh, and you're playing the note E on the G row. In fact, all the notes are on the G row in this stave. Now the, the clever thing here, right, the D uh, bass in that second bar, you play the bass note uh, pulling, so that's the D bass note nearest the floor, uh, outside row. But the chord, you come up uh, to the top button, the other end of that row if you like, pushing in. So you do like a pull push. Show you how it works. See? Pull push. So as you play the D bass there and the D chord, the right hand is playing a C and a D. come to the B note and you're still pushing on the G chord. So that stay a little bit tricky because you've got you've got to get that other little uh, D note in there just before you go for that um, D bass. The next stave is the same as the second stave was. And then the next stave is the same as the first stave of this section. So you've got the quick fire, uh, D bass, D chord, changing direction. And then the last stave is the same as the last stave of the A section. So stave eight, is the same as stave four, and you remember this. So here's the whole of the B section. is a problem I have with most of the pieces I play is I can't seem to keep my tempo even. Uh, it's probably a nervous thing. I start speeding up and no matter how much I tell myself to keep it slow, uh, I really can't. So maybe I need to practice with a metronome. Um, I've always hated the things, but maybe that's something I need to, to think about. Uh, by the way, in the tune, you only need to use three fingers of the right hand. You actually don't need the little finger. If you look at the tiny numbers, uh, underneath or on top of the note heads, you'll see that that's right. So if you're an absolute beginner, try this way of doing it and then you can draw your own conclusions. You might prefer you know, playing it in a more traditional way without doing so much row crossing, but for me I actually find it a lot easier. Anyway, that is the end of this blog, blog number 28. Um, I've just bought a brand new box today and so the next blog will feature that and I'm very excited about doing that for you. So I'll see you soon.